This is part 11 of our Breath of the Wild series, and in this part we're going to spend a little bit of time exploring this frozen area of the Great Plateau, just getting a few items for our inventory, uh, including a pretty useful item for this point in the game, the warm doublet, or doublet. We're going to go with doublet. I, I, I think doublet. Let's not, we're not French or anything, so let's not try to sound French or yep. whatever that language would be or try to make it all fancy. It's a Zelda we are not game. Fancy. You know, it's not the first time we screwed up any name in Zelda. Like, Absolutely I'm not even not. trying to pronounce any of the shrine names because because I know that I'm going to like oh, screw them rough. up horribly. <laughs> and we're also going to get our second Korok seed of the game, and I promise as the longer we go, we won't say every time we get one because yeah, there's definitely. hundreds of them, but not a whole lot else is happening in this part, so that's what we're going to do. One thing that I find very strange is like, why we get this cold region like so early on in the game, like... I mean, okay, it's a little bit of a high elevation, but it's not really that high compared yeah. to some of the uh, other lands in the game. And so I, I kind of was confused on why they threw this at us so early. Um, you see the beauty of, like, the area around the Temple of Time. And I yeah. really just thought the Great Plateau would kind of be all like that. But at the same time, I guess it's a good variation to have early on in the game because a lot of Zelda games, we don't get that variation uh, early on. That's true. The only thing I could really think of is that they wanted to expose us to the fact that the the weather is a factor in this mm -hmm. game. So mm -hmm. the earlier we find That's that out, point. and and they, of course they put like the uh, the spicy peppers or whatever the food is right outside the entrance to the area. So it kind of lets you know that hey, you can't just wander around this game wearing whatever outfit you want without taking some precautions. So even though maybe having this area on the Great Plateau doesn't make the most sense in terms of the geography yeah. of Hyrule, I think it's it was kind of important to at least introduce us to the mechanic of weather. And see, that threw me off at first because um, you've played a lot more open world games. It's a lot more computer games. Games yeah. like kind of sort of like this where I've, I've really not played a lot of them. Like in GTA 5, I just killed somebody if I won something. Like I really didn't have to like go <laughs> yep. search for it or like eat anything. So for me, the whole mechanic was new and it didn't take me like a long time to adjust. But like it threw like it, it very early at me that, okay, I'm going to have to make some changes yep. in the way that I go about the Zelda game because it is a different Zelda game. So I kind of do agree with what you said right there about how they're trying to make you like understand the mechanics of the game Absolutely. early on so that does make sense and hey we've talked about this before but you're the kind of person who doesn't stop to talk to people you don't no. stop to collect stuff that's laying around so red you know what's funny is we were kind of talking behind the scenes the other day and like oh i made to Ganon, but all i have left in the game is um, oh my gosh some sh <laughs> a shrine quest and yep. some side quests and all the korok seeds which i'm not going to do yeah. and i go i'm eventually going to hit my point with talking to people because that's basically how you activate most of the shrine quest and it side is. quest and it maybe was three hours of gameplay until i was like you know what i'm done talking to people it's too much i'm just moving right on to ganon <laughs> and and you know again we talk about like having the the food or the elixirs that help you with the elements of like yeah. the weather but you, they also do come in really handy in combat against the tougher enemy of the game tougher enemies sorry of the game and you'll see later on like i will take a lot of like the either defense boost or attack boost like elixirs and things like that just to make the fights against creatures like the Lionel or the Stone Talus yeah. or, or some of the bosses of the dungeons just to it makes it a little bit easier and I know that is not your strong suit no but I actually did start doing that but kind of get back to the gameplay I think it's yep. it's really getting hard for us to kind of talk about this game because we're so far into it now yeah like I said I, I actually went and fought Gan I've not beat him yet I know you're pretty far into the game and then come back all the way to the beginning right here like I remember, like, in the uh, Cryonis trial, I was like, why in the world is he not using his paraglider yep. to go down to that <laughs> chest? I'm like, oh, we actually don't have the paraglider yet. But one thing I do want to say is this mountain right here just offers a spectacular uh, spectacular yes. view early on in the game. And also getting that warm doublet was just a great item for this area, obviously. And to me, it was just, I, I saw the mountain there. I just wanted to climb up there just to see if, again, this is such a great open world game. I just wanted to see if anything was up there. Yeah. I was surprised to get up there and see the old man I was waiting too. up there and when he gave us the warm doublet that just it makes it so that we don't have to use the elixirs or the food to keep us warm which in this area it's useful but we'll also use it a little bit uh later in the game until we get some obviously some better you know better equipment <laughs> yeah uh -huh. but this early in the game it was really clutch to get something that lets us navigate this frozen area without losing health 
And kind of go back to the elixirs and what you were talking about. Yeah, I was kind of bad about the elixirs. It's just something like something that's it's not really time consuming, but you know, I like fast pace. I like yep. moving. <laughs> and so stopping the cook for me was not one thing I really did until last night actually. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go into like gaining with all this life and everything. Yep. And really, I mean, if you're like in the early part of the game, these elixirs, like I would recommend doing them because they do help you out a lot. Um yes you can eat food and like get some help back that way. Yeah. But if you mix them with some ingredients, like you can really refill a lot of your hearts just by that one elixir. And I love the ones that give you extra hearts. You can get ones yes. that get you up to like 10, 11, 12 extra hearts. I mean, we won't get those for a while, of course. But just to have that ability, you know, it makes up for the fact that early on in the game, we have so few hearts. Like, I mean, like any Zelda game, we yeah. have so few hearts to work with. Except early Skyward on. Sword. Skyward Sword was different on the hearts, though. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> what you needed right there as you made that jump. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think all the hearts in the world would have made a difference because I just fell off the entire Great Plateau. <laughs> well, I saw what you're doing right there. Like, you can see the ledge kind of coming up, and I actually yep. thought you made it too. And then you jump, and you're just like, oh, crap, this ledge is a little bit farther away. I didn't expect that. It was, and you just went down. <laughs> I just didn't expect that to cut like that far. I guess into the path yep. that I was mm-hmm. walking, so I was just kind of following, you know, the edge there. And next thing you know, I fell to my death. <laughs> but yeah, a minute ago or so, you saw me pick up a rock and and find a korok under that. And you're gonna see me after I discovered that one. I started picking up just about every rock I could find. Yeah. <laughs> And it gets I mean, that's, that's what I do, too, really. I mean, like, as I've been going through this game, it's actually been a meme, is that, like, when you're playing this game, like, you know, you go through and you pick up every rock, yeah. and now people are, like, doing that in real life, expecting God. to find <laughs> something that you can do something with. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me, but... <laughs> All I know is once I found that core rock, I was like, well, I've got to pick up every rock from here on out. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't actually, pick up every one. I did not mean to stop talking right there, but my throat was getting kind of dry, so I had to get a little sip of beer in there. Oh, that's so I kind of had to cut off my uh, conversation a little bit early, I guess. <laughs> hey, the sips of beer are what gets us through some of these parts. <laughs> yeah, that's true, especially the Oracle games. Oh, let's 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 not even go that right. <laughs> we took a break from those so we could commentate a much more relevant and much more important game in the Zelda franchise. By, by the way, I did like your move right there. Like you equipped a something, maybe a sword or something, and then as soon as you equipped it, you kind of jumped to the side, and that vocal blend missed you, and just a really nice move right there. And it's something that I appreciate because. As you all know, like, I'm pretty much balls to the wall. (laughs) I try to kill him before he kills me. And, like, you know, I'm going to have some bruises. I'm going to have some scratches. That's just part of the battle. Like, dodging and, like, using a shield and everything, like, it's it's appreciation for me because I don't get to see it very often when I'm (laughs) playing the game. (laughs) The dodging is something that I didn't really do a lot of until the very first time. And this is going to be quite a few parts into the future. But I think the very first time I ran into, like, a Lionel, where you can actually dodge and it slows down time and lets yeah. you get if you time your dodge oh, yeah. perfectly mm-hmm. and it slows down time so you can get in a ton of attacks all at once like that is a very very useful skill against the more powerful enemies Agreed. against these early level guys it's kind of like yeah as long as you get out of the way of their weapon it doesn't and they I think they call it what the the flurry rush yeah, it's something it's like that. Like I don't, you learn it pretty early on in the game. I think we'll yeah. learn it kind of like soon after we get off the Great Plateau, if I'm correct. Well, there's a, a combat shrine, if I'm not mistaken, where they kind of teach it to you. And I feel like I missed that at, in like either my mobile playthrough or something. But I eventually found it. I'm like, oh, I discovered that on accident. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Red, I gotta admit, you got done wrong right there on that explosion. Oh, like that I did not see that BS. coming. <laughs> and then when I saw it, I just had to laugh because. I think what the vocal blend goes into the fire and he just spits out fire and it just blows up all those explosives Dude. around you. That's just <laughs> one of those moments you probably couldn't do that again if you tried. No, and it's frustrating because I remember looking down on that camp and I love the fact that some of these camps have the like explosive barrels yep. mm-hmm. or some of them have like the uh, magnetic or, or metallic like crates that you can throw around with your magnesis ability. But I totally just decided not to use that. Apparently yeah, yeah. And jumped right into that camp, and I paid the price because those barrels were still sitting there waiting for me. Well, at least you had the arrows. Like early on, and I'm still, well, I'm finally not struggling, but we kind of talked about in the beginning parts. I struggled like terribly with getting arrows and stuff. Yeah. And so, like, right now, you already have so many more than I had <laughs> until like midway through the game. And so, right there, really, the only choice I had was to fight them with my sword. And I tried to make a point, like, anytime I ran into a, a vendor who sold 
Yeah. Um, any kind of arrows, whether it was like Beetle just selling regular arrows or any of the vendors in the villages that had, whether it was bomb Anyways, Red, this will wrap up uh, oh, part yeah. 11 of uh, Breath of the Wild uh, Let's Play series.